What's up guys, Lexus Overland here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to turn this into this. This right here is the Hurricane Fabrication 100 Series Tailgate Storage. I'm really pumped on this. It's going to be a replacement for this dirty ratty carpet and also give me some really convenient storage options for lightweight stuff. You know, you don't want to weigh way down the tailgate too much, but quick access things, whatever I want to put in there, really. So in this video, I will give you an overview of what you get, what the kit comes with, how to install it, any tips, tricks, lessons learned along the way, and what I choose to put in it and what I think about it. So let's get started. All right, we'll start with the included hardware. They include these nuts that are like a locking nut. The top is not perfectly round, so you don't need Loctite, you don't need a lock washer. Those should not come loose, which is great. They upgraded the hardware to these uh, flatter hex head black bolts instead of the silver rounded bolts, which is great. They won't rust and they look a lot better, so it's awesome that they're like listening to feedback from the customers and improving. And these are furniture sliders because apparently this can catch on the latches and the hinge. So they provide you with these in case that's an issue and you don't have to worry about it. This grommet is, because, is included because some of the lock cylinders on the hatch are affixed to the sheet metal that you're cutting off. Some of them are not. If they're affixed to the sheet metal that you're cutting off and you can't find this part, you can just stick that grommet in the hole and not worry about it. They've also included a really nice set of latches that come with keys. You got four of them, so if you lose all of them, you don't deserve to get into your tailgate. And also a laser cut template to help make sure that your cuts are perfect, which is great. They also come standard with some really nice thick sound deadening foam so that the stuff that you put in there doesn't rattle around, which would drive me nuts. And I chose the option with this marine carpet. It's a thin adhesive. It should give me enough traction for when I'm standing on it when it's raining and I gotta throw my dog in the tent. Adds a nice touch and then it won't be just cold, bare metal that'll scratch easily. So that is what is included. Now let's get into the steps needed to install. All right, just a real quick overview of the installation instructions because I will be showing you what to do. But you'll essentially remove the carpet, get everything out of the way, cover up your truck, put the template down, trace it, remove the template, cut it out, deal with the lock cylinder appropriately. They recommend to use an angle grinder, which I'm going to use. Clean up the edges, spray paint, install the sound deadening, and then you get to install this beauty. And then you get to adjust the latches. I did skip ahead. Here's where you deal with the grommet hole. And uh, then they also talk about this plastic lip getting caught, which we've discussed. So let's start with step one of removing the old dingy carpet. All right, to give me a little bit more room to work, I'm going to remove this. It's just five Phillips head two fasteners. Really easy, it just pops out on each end once you get the screws and you're good to go. All right, with that out of the way, you've got a bit more room and you can remove this easily. It just has clips along the way, all around. I'm going to use a combination of these two tools so that I don't damage anything and it just comes up real nice. So let's get that removed. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just moving along and popping up. If you go quick, you probably won't break anything, which is ideal. You can just kind of feel where they're at and uh, continue along until it comes off. Here's the underside. It's just like some fiberboard or something. You can tell it's seen better days. I almost got every single fastener out with cover. I just got two remaining, so I'll pop these out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steal these because these are pretty much the same as what's used on, throughout the whole interior. So now I have a whole bunch of these to uh, replace the ones that I break when I remove other things. 
Well, would you look at that? I guess my LX is basically a Land Cruiser. So here's what it looks like with the cover removed. Next steps are to disconnect the two lock cables. These right here. And remove the wire and harness so that you don't damage it. And these are pretty simple. You just pop this out. I say it's simple and then struggle with it. And then uh, figure out the way to get that out of the catch. But uh, it's not too bad. It's usually... There's like a little hole right here that you'll feed the cable through. That's how you get those out. You can see the other hole down there on that one. So I'll get on removing these and these. And then we'll continue on. All right. Little status update. To assist with getting the harnesses out of the way, I removed this cover that covers the part of the tailgate lighting. It's just three Phillips head screws. You disconnect it right here with the plug. And you can see this feeds down into and up into the body from here. So this is kind of where they all come from. So following it over, do the same on this side. Just remove that cover, three screws. And then it tees off over here to the lock cylinder, which is right here. And this also has a plug that clips in, I believe right there. So just unplug that. And I will be feeding these down into here to get them out of the way. These two lock cables go to each side where you have like the mechanism that holds your tailgate up. Traces back over to here. I haven't decided if I'm gonna disconnect from over here as well or just feed them in and down. I really don't wanna cut them because then I can't open my tailgate, but we will see. One more thing to mention, these like holders for the harness awful to get out so uh like literally all of them that i did they broke i took mr dyke and uh just snipped them so that i it's free i mean i'm cutting out the metal anyways and also to help with the lock cylinders i used a little pick to push it out and feed it through just make sure that the wire or cable or whatever aligns with this little slot and then you can push it out and you're good to go this is what your tailgate should look like when you've hidden all of the lock cables and harnesses. I use these holes to stick my hand in and make sure that they were routed properly and not like up on the edges where I'm going to be cutting. You can also kind of get in there and check it out, make sure that it's not sticking up on the edges or anything like that. Because the last thing that I want to do is install a tailgate and repair harness and or a little cable lock. So uh, let's move on to the template. Got ye olde template installed. I use the included fasteners in every single hole because I didn't want any part of the paper to be stressed more than it needed to be. I wanted it to be perfectly located. So next steps are to trace it and then think long and hard before cutting into my metal tailgate that I cannot undo without buying a new one. So I'm gonna get to tracing. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna use to trace because this is a dark color and I only have black Sharpies. We'll see, maybe it'll show up enough, but uh, let's get to it. Template is traced. I used a blue paint marker because it matches my eyes. I uh, originally used my Milwaukee. Yes, I love Milwaukee that much that I have a Sharpie that they make, but it didn't really show up. Mr. T used a little bit more paint over here, so I just figured, eh, whatever, I'll retrace the whole thing with the blue. One important note, it does have an orientation, this side up. You can sanity check yourself because the center support you're leaving is right here. You can kind of see that in there. So uh, I'm going to remove the template, make sure all my traces make sense, and get to cutting. Hulky dokey. Tailgate is set up for the irreversible cutting. You can see my beautiful blue, like my eyes, trace lines. PPE, people. My wife's an ear doctor. That means if you watch this video, you have to wear ear protection. Got my angle grinder with a fresh cutoff wheel. And I just used the uh, cardboard that they shipped it in because, you know, three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Here's me reusing. So I'm going to get to cutting. 
Some of the areas that you want to be careful of are right here with this lock cylinder and this harness and all the bits underneath it. Uh, same here, just be wary of the harness. Most of the things that I fed in landed up here, so be careful there. Again here with the lock cable and harnesses in this area. Wish me luck. All right, a little bit of a progress update. Open the garage so that uh, I got some good ventilation. It's generally a good idea. I have cut the perimeter of the driver's side. You can see this bar right here is like an assist bar that helps lift the tailgate. We will be figuring out how to maintain this function uh, with the cover to aid with the weight of what we're doing, you know, adding the tailgate storage. Now, these crossbars right here, I'll have to figure out a way to cut them. I have a reciprocating saw, but I'd like to figure out a way that like people that don't have reciprocating saws can do this. I, I guess a hacksaw would work just great. So there's my suggestion if you don't have a reciprocating saw, I mean a sawzall or whatever. Um, on places like this, where you have like a small cut, since this piece is going away, I entered the metal here and went this way, that way, it wasn't like cutting in here, and it's actually a pretty clean cut that didn't work out too well there. But uh, that's my advice for like small cuts like that. So let's work on getting these supports out, and we'll move on to that side. One side down, here's that, I guess you call it torsion bar. That uh, connects back here, right here and apparently legitimately helps with lifting and lowering the tailgate. Getting these out, kind of precarious. Uh, maybe if you had like a jigsaw or something, which I have, just didn't want to use, it would be easier. This was sketchy, to say the least, but it's out, nothing's damaged. Remember I said most things settled up in here, so just be very careful. But uh, one side done, let's... Uh, Move on. Got the second half done. I just am not a fan of this portion. It's not necessarily difficult. It's just this is pushing up on it. And this is relatively deep. Can't get it with the cutoff wheel. I tried it with my jigsaw and it didn't work. I used this. I just butted it up against the metal real good and chugged right through it. So that's that. But uh, the difficult and scary part is done, and to my knowledge, so far, I have not damaged anything, which is great. Now I am cleaning up the cuts on this little support thing. I cut it at an angle, uh, so it still provided some support, but wasn't in the way of things. I'm obviously going to clean this up, but uh, just to give you an idea of what I did... Just use the angle grinder to cut at an angle. And uh, I'm using this, it's like a Brillo disc pad to file this down. If you don't have one of these, just use a metal file. Not a big deal. But I'm gonna clean this up as best I can. And we'll keep chucking. Shoo wee, that was about half an hour of grinding and checking and grinding again just to make sure that I wasn't going to cut my hand or any pieces that I put in here on the metal. It's done, which I'm glad. Um, I've been thinking about these spring arms. So, torque is force times distance, and because of how long these are, they have a greater distance able to impart a greater torque on the tailgate i was thinking if i bent them over you know i'd retain the stock length and whatnot but it won't change the distance so i'm just going to cut them just such that they still touch as far as they can but unfortunately just not possible to get the same level of stock assistance from these but oh well i'll have a lot of storage so i'm going to cut these right now and we'll move on to cleaning and painting the edges so it doesn't rust.
One of the most important aspects of painting is the prep. If you want the paint to stick, the surface got to be prepped. So I use some isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber towel and just wipe down all the surfaces that I'm going to paint. I'm going to use this cardboard to block what I don't want to get paint on and this Rust-Oleum quick dry high performance enamel. Looks 100 times nicer. Super easy to paint, probably took two minutes max. I did paint this center portion because it's going to be exposed, so why not make it look a little nice? I actually might come back in and paint this part too. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Just so it looks as good as it can. There we go. That looks nice. One thing I really like about this Rust-Oleum is it's an any angle spray. So upside down, perfectly fine, which helps a lot for painting stuff like this. Just had a lovely time watching paint dry. It is dry, which is good. I used more isopropyl alcohol in the microfiber towel to clean the inside, because I'm about to install the sound deadening. So I still have the harness clips out of the way and whatnot so that I can get it up in there. I'm going to take care of the larger half first. Uh, don't set your tailgate cover on top of this like I did because it will leave these marks where the rivet is. Rivets are, which kind of sucks, but I'm sure it'll bounce back. I am going to install it this way so that when you lower the tailgate, open it up, you can read it, which is going to be fun. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, I'd be lying to you if I said I enjoyed doing this part, but uh, it's necessary. I was able to kind of get around all the stuff that sticks up, curve it up in there. I'm saving all little pieces that I cut off so I can put them places like here. And I don't know if I'll put anything up there, but now it's time for this side. Sound deadening install complete. I've also rerouted the lock cables and the harnesses and whatnot. I drilled holes through this to kind of zip tie them up out of the way. This one kind of sucks. Oh, also I have the lock cylinder that doesn't need modification. It bolts to the uh, other part of the tailgate. So it didn't cut out the mounting. For reference, this is a 2002 LX470. Don't know what it's gonna be for other years, but uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. I was able to get sound deadening up like along the bottom and this upper. Oh, also I put the uh, rubber caps back on this little torsion bar so that it doesn't scratch anything, which is nice. And now for the favorite part, putting that thing in, let's get at it. All right, so you were given 14 bolts of this length and two bolts of this length. The two bolts that are longer go in the side because there's like a little bracket thing down there that extends longer you will not be able to see it but uh yeah those and I think you're gonna have to probably thread it in yeah so the longer bolts middle sides this bolt hole right here at least on my truck is like nearly impossible to get to you have to like go up and under and you can like barely grab it so that's gonna be fun but the rest should be really really easy so I'm gonna work on getting those in. Okay, so this right here is the problem child. You can see it's not the easiest to get to. The way that I routed my cable was, it ended up in the way. So I disconnected that to make it a little easier and I should be able to get it like that. I wouldn't recommend cutting any further than their template because this little downturn provides a lot of structural strength. So I'd say just deal with it and you should be good. Well. That was somewhat obnoxious. Those lock uh, nuts are no joke. They will not come out. They also make it very difficult for them to install. Not that it's really hard, it's just you're cranking, you gotta hold it from the bottom, crank on the top. But uh, they're all in, it looks great, feels great. So next steps are to install and adjust the latches and then final step is the carpet. Here are the latches. Per the instructions, 
you remove this silver backing plate right here and that's what kind of holds the latch in place from the bottom and then there's an adjustment for the latching force via these 10 millimeter nuts and bolt or whatever so you release the 10 millimeter locking nut on the adjustable screw and alter the height as necessary making the screw taller will increase the locking pressure making it shorter will decrease the locking pressure so I'm going to throw these on and then we'll walk through the adjustment. All right, so to install, as stated, you remove that backing plate. You just unthread this bolt, it's 10 millimeter. Here's the backing plate. Here's what it looks like installed. So the backing plate just holds it in place. Tighten this to a moderate torque. I use Threadlocker Orange, it's my favorite. You can use blue if you'd like just so that when you're rattling down the road, this doesn't come loose. And uh, the locking mechanism, whatever you want to call it, faces towards this, so that it actually locks on here. So I'm gonna get the other one in and then we'll move on to adjusting. Working on the fine tuning of the adjustment. Got that side pretty good. This side, a little annoying specifically because it's hitting the top of my lock cylinder kind of wish I had deleted this but at the same time like if I don't have to I'd like to keep it so what I'm gonna have to do is sharpie the tip of this take it out hack it off and uh, go from there not a big deal but just be weary if your lock cylinder can stay as you can see mine Got a little scratched. It's really not a big deal. It should still work, but just something to keep in mind. Got it trimmed and put back on. You can see it sticks out just a little less than this one. One pro tip that I have when cutting bolts is to have a nut above the cut. Once you cut it, you can use the nut to kind of chase the threads because it doesn't cut clean unless you have like a deburring tool or, or whatever. That's just kind of a cheap and easy way to do it. So let's continue adjusting. Once you've found the locking force that you'd prefer, don't forget to lock tight because these will rattle loose and you will play this game again. So only play it once. I'm quite happy with where I've got it. Nice positive release. Satisfying engagement. Moderate amount of force, but not too much. Of course, if it gets too loose, too tight, even though I have Loctite, it's a pretty easy adjustment. Just remember, when you're tightening, to hold the bolt in place and tighten the nut. That way the bolt doesn't move up or down, but the nut locks it in place. Well, I think this looks fantastic. Super happy with the install. Looks great, feels great, is great. But let's make it even better. I'm gonna add that marine carpet that I was telling y'all about. But of course, first, isopropyl alcohol and a wipe down. Here's why isopropyl alcohol is so great. It evaporates nearly immediately. So it takes up all the oils, dirts, contaminants, and then disappears leaving a fresh surface so the adhesive can adhere properly. Well, I guess I should have test fit prior to installing the locks. Uh, this one she had to put the carpet on, just won't fit around it, which is actually preferred because it means that it's sealed completely around the carpet as well. So I'm gonna take those locks off. It shouldn't mess with the adjusting mechanism, which is good. So I'm gonna take them off, put the carpet on, put them back on, and then I'll be done. Of course, as luck would have it, I had to readjust them, but no big deal. They are in. All good. I think it speaks for itself. Look at how much room this is. And of course, don't forget the uber satisfying peeling of the uh, Whatever you call those things. Things that keep things shiny that are really nice to peel off. I mean, just... Look at that. Oh, yeah. 
I need that part. Almost forgot that. I mean, I would have remembered eventually, but forgot in terms of making this video. Now I'm seeing why they included the furniture sliders. It uh, hits the latches pretty good. So I'm going to put those on. Hopefully it'll fix it. I mean, I can figure it out if it doesn't. You can't really grind this problem away because, as you can see, it's pretty much level with the, uh, or flush with the top right there. So, not a huge deal. I'd say that the storage is worth the minor inconvenience. But, I'm sure I'll be able to fix it. So, got the four furniture sliders installed. I did put one kind of towards the end and then one right on the inside. And... Check it out. That works great. I'm sure at some point I might have to glue them or maybe dremel out this area so they can sit more flush to get more adhesive. As you can see the light through there. But they'll also never not be touching this. So there's not really any reason for them to fall off. But we'll see. For now it works and for that I'm happy. Okay, so I have gone around the garage and my drawers from my normal gear and picked some things that I think go very well in here. They are either first out, last in items or quick access. I'm never going to be needing them when the drawers are open or the fridge is open. I'm going to pull over on the side of the road and need them quick. So jumper cables. This is uh, awning stakes, some coil packs, a pair of ratchet straps, air hose and digital inflator, drive belt, and jump starter. This is just the beginning of things that I'm putting in here. I'm going to keep it lightweight because the tailgate is heavier. It's not bad, but it is heavier. So maybe throw in like a poncho or two, maybe some emergency blankets. This is just a very large amount of space for small things that you really can't put anywhere else or would just clutter up a spot that you already have for storage. I'm, I'm in love with this thing already. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it kind of sucks a little bit. The wife is probably going to complain. But really, I mean... I think that the storage and the convenience and the durability that this replacement tailgate cover will give you is well worth it. I am so happy. So, to sum it up, this tailgate cover and storage is freaking awesome. Extremely high quality components. Everything's very tough and robust feeling. These latches are surprisingly heavy. This hardware won't rust. This whole thing is actually made in Texas. They have a metal stamping company that does it all for them. So this was shipped from Texas, made by Texans, which I'm from Texas, so it was pretty cool. I looked at other tailgate options, and I landed on this one because not only is it a replacement cover, you saw how trashed mine was, but it also adds a very decent amount of storage and an easily accessible spot. I did reach out to Hurricane and say, hey, I want y'all's tailgate cover. Can I make a video for y'all for a discount? And they actually sent me one, which is amazing. But I did pick this independently, and I'm independently happy about it. I think that anybody who wants a little bit more storage for their truck, this is the way to go. I'm so happy about it. It's awesome. Obviously, I'm happy because I've said it like a bajillion times, but... I think the thing's freaking sweet. Thank you all for uh, following along as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.